On today's show, we talk about the renovations to a concert venue. A store closes its doors for the final time. And a five-decade-long program has some major changes on the horizon. All that and more on the Globe News Report. Welcome to the Globe News Report. I'm Bryce Stouffer. And I'm Zachariah Begley. Well, Zach, we're here at the end of March. What did you enjoy most about the past month? I enjoyed being able to go outside and hang out with friends instead of being stuck inside all day. What about you? Uh, I'm excited for the warm weather. I'm not a cold weather person, and I'm more than happy for spring to get started. The Blue Gate Theater in Shipshawana is looking to expand its venue size to accommodate bigger acts being brought into the Michiana area. Katie Spore with more on the story. The Blue Gate Theater in Shipshawana is undergoing a major construction amounting to $3 million. Andrew Rohr, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Blue Gate Hospitality, reflects on the changes that he's seen in the last 19 years. When we started here, we, we produced actually a local show right across the street. And uh, then we started, when we built the new facility, we started getting in new acts and bigger and bigger names. The progression has really been with us and what we've learned, uh, not only with how to get bigger artists in, but the, the, the technical part of it, the sounds, the, the, the sound systems, the lights, uh, all that. Uh, the, it's a steep learning curve and it really took us the full 19 years to get to the point where we're at now. After these 19 years, the Blue Gate Theater is still focused on the same objective. Our goal is always just to try to provide the music that people are asking for, and people are always asking for the bigger and bigger names. In order to accommodate for these bigger acts, the Blue Gate Theater is about to embark on a $3 million project to remodel the venue. The Blue Gate itself is a pretty big organization. We have the restaurant, the theater, we have uh, three other retail stores, a hotel. Uh, as well as the event center. It's a, while three million dollars is a large investment, we really feel like with the acts that we're getting in, um, it's gonna be a good investment. One of the biggest changes in the remodel is the capacity and seating within the auditorium. So the new theater, the whole venue will be sloping. Uh, we've pushed the design to the very maximum that we can to, and still stay in ADA compliance um, so that the, everybody can uh, get that that best view. Not only that, but better seating, uh, better arrangement. The, the, the furthest seat back is actually a third closer than the current venue, so um, it's going to feel a lot more intimate even though there's more seats there. The new developments are expected to be completed by January of 2020. For Globe News, I'm Katie Spore. My favorite part of Blue Gate is all the new acts that are coming to town. What about you, Zach? I'm excited for the new food they might be bringing in with the renovation. The food was pretty good before, so I'm excited to see what they do with it now. It's time to say farewell to a beloved Goshen store when we come back on the Globe News Report. Goshen College students enjoy an amazing success record, and we have some impressive numbers to prove it. But stories of our graduates say even more, like developing a breakthrough antiviral drug for HIV AIDS, writing number one hits, being named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world for cancer research, and enjoying a broadcast career right out of college. They all started with a real-world education on a campus that makes everyone feel at home. See how the numbers add up and schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Better World Books is closing its doors for the final time in downtown Goshen. I went down and talked with the general manager and community members about its legacy and the hole it will leave behind. Here's the story. For the past 10 years, Better World Books has been serving the Goshen community. As it closes its doors, we take a look back on the impact it's had over the decade. It's mostly an online business now. It actually was originally just an online business and, and they, they spun the bookstore off and they had an outlet store and they, they played around with different concepts. But the online business was always the, the first thing and, uh, and it's actually 99.9% .9 of the business is, is through the online sales. I've heard a lot of people talking about a, a bunch of different things, either a game store or a bookstore or a combination of the two. You know, I've been here for four years and I've never met so many great, fun-loving, nice people in my life. It's, it's a great community and I'll be, that's the thing that I'll miss the most is, is just all the, all the people that I've come to know here. Along with asking Better World Books General Manager Rick Newbert about his thoughts of Better World Books closing, we also asked members of the community on their thoughts as well. I've been to Better World Books ever since it's been on Washington Street, and so that's when I first heard about it and got interested in it. And it's going to be sad losing the store. I mean, this is 
it has a great selection of books, history books, things like that. Um, it's going to be sad for the community. So I'm kind of sad that Goshen, um, that Better World Books is closing because, again, it was a pillar of the community, and I especially like going here. All the staff were really friendly, and I could just go around and look up books, and they were usually good price books if they were, if they were like, half off. And this is the place where I got all of my card games especially because I would always go here, and they would have what I was looking for. And so I'm going to be really sad to see this place close. Better World Books would be sorely missed, but many are grateful for the service it gave to the community. For Globe News, I'm Zachariah Begley. I'm going to miss being able to go on Thursday nights and play games at Better World Books. What about you? I'm going to miss being able to get my favorite books and games. It was just a really great place overall. When we come back, Bryce will talk about the changes coming to a 50-year program. That and more on the Globe News Report. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. SST has been a staple of the Goshen College curriculum since 1968. For the 50th year anniversary, Goshen decided to take an extensive search into improving the program. I have the story. On March 6th, Goshen College celebrated 50 years of its successful study service term, or SST, program. Goshen College students, staff, and alumni gathered to share past experiences and discuss how SST will change in the future. A few GC alumni shared how SST has affected their lives. It was actually because of SST that I decided to major in Spanish at Goshen College and since then have been uh, teaching Spanish for the past 17 years. I remember coming back from service really being changed um, with the thought of what is service. Um, I think I went into it with all the youth and idealism and energy and then realized that really service was all about listening to what other people had to offer um, and just being a presence. I knew I wasn't doing anything of service there because I didn't know anything. Um, but the people that I came into contact with were so gracious and so kind and so sharing of their lives. Um, and for me, that was sort of another way of doing service. We began to dream together and uh, the result was the beginning of a program to do on-site learning or experiential learning in different cultural settings that is different from northern Indiana where our campus was located. So uh, going abroad with students was the center of the picture as far as we were concerned. Incoming Director of International Education Jan Bender Shetler explained why SST is changing for the future. It's changing. I mean, we're thinking about this now because the percentage of students going on SST has been declining. And we're now close to only 50% of students who are going on the international program. So we feel like unless we do something radical, we do some radical changes that that's just going to continue to decline. So how do we make it more accessible, more possible for more students and get back up to the 80 some percent that that used to go on SST? For Globe News, I'm Bryce Stouffer. So Zach, I know you're going on SST. What are your plans? Well, I was going to go to Peru, but now that Peru is no longer available, I'm going to head over to Ecuador because that was announced this week and I'm excited. Coming up, we look at a yearly event to showcase talents from around the world. Stay tuned, you're watching the Globe News Report. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, and it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. International Coffee House happened once again in Satter Concert Hall. 
The event showcased the talents of many of the countries and cultures at Goshen College, raised money, and provided scholarships. Allison has more on the story. Last Saturday was a day of celebration for the International Students of Goshen College. The International Student Club, or ISC, held their annual Coffee House celebration. Dan Kuplichty was in charge of the program this year for the first time. Yeah, the Coffee House is a chance for the international students to work together on a big project and to provide something for the local college and local community to sort of give back um, a fun time for them to share from their cultures, their food and their and their arts and that kind of thing. International student Nimoy Vajja has loved being a part of the coffee house throughout his time here. Dancing is just something that I really hold dear. When you perform something for other people to see, you're kind of like legitimizing it, you know? I can say I have a passion for dancing, but if I never show it to anybody, then it doesn't really mean anything. B-boying is what me and my group do. And if we go back to the 1960s with hip hop, um, there are four elements of hip hop, and they are emceeing, graffiti writing, DJing, and b-boying. So it's an ability, or it gives a platform for anybody to express themselves in any way. The evening came to a close with scholarships being awarded to four international students, Nassim Rasul Lapour, Mandira Penta, Yejin Kim, and Nithya Abraham. Afterwards, attendees had a chance to mingle with the performers and congratulate them on a spectacular show. For Globe News, I'm Allison Priggy. So Bryce, both you and I attended Coffee House, and my favorite part was the Barnett boys, as they were able to dance and incorporate music. It was a lot of fun. What was your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part was probably Hajin Kim when he played Bohemian Rhapsody on the ukulele. I really enjoyed that part. That was really well done. That's all we have for you today. Check us out on the Globe's YouTube page and on globeradio.org. Tune in again next month. This has been the Globe News Report.